Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're going to check out Pure OS. So I did a video yesterday about the state of the open source mobile space and came across an operating system called Pure OS and what attracted me to it and for hopefully us to walk through the day is that they're, they've got it set up to be installed on a desktop and they're working on making it available easily on a phone. And I really like that. So what I wanna do is I wanna walk through the website, kind of see what they're about, and then we'll walk through on a virtual machine and see how Pure OS works and see if we can poke around. It might be a project that we want to keep our eye on in the future. You can just see this says Pure OS, a fully convergent, user-friendly, secure, and freedom-respecting OS for your daily usage. Okay, all oh, that sounds great. Download link here. In my previous video, talking about open source on mobile devices, uh, one of the things that I found attractive with iOS is that there is some convergence, is what they're calling it here, uh, between laptop and phone and tablet and whatever else you have. And it looks like they're trying to achieve that here. This is a fully auditable operating system, which means you don't have to trust our word that it respects and protects you. It is it is independently verifiable by security experts and software developers around the world. Sounds good to me. That's what they're telling me. I like that. Real convergence means bringing your desktop computer with you wherever you go. When we talk about how we have invested in convergence with Pure OS, we start with the desktop OS and shrink it down to your pocket. Move through what's new. Um, they are talking about stability, new security and update software channels, new tooling for managing older versions of TPM chips, changing, um, sorry, changes to make the Librem key work out of the box, lots of bug fixes, and the healing of paper cuts. Okay. It also looks like it is GNOME focused as far as the environment that you're going to use. And so what I've done is I have pulled it up on a virtual machine and I started to go through the install process. Sometimes I like to show the install process and sometimes I just like to get into the desktop environment or whatever we're working with. And I stopped here. So I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this. And what I found interesting is, first off, this is the, it started me off with the GNOME help. And it's got getting started with the launch applications, how to switch tasks, how to use Windows and workspaces. And like I said, I've done this a fair amount of times and I've not accessed GNOME's help and I like these little videos. I watched them, they're 30 to 45 seconds, simply showing you what you can do. Thanks, Gnome. That's cool, and I think that's a great way for an operating system to start. I love welcome screens, because as a new user, they help me know which way to go, where to look. Thank you, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And this is what I'm greeted with. Now, this is this is GNOME, okay? It's GNOME, which means if I hit my Windows key, I'm going to have access to a bar over here, right? And then it uh, looks like we have our workspaces here. And then if I need to search, I'm going to search for help, like it told me to. There it is. And there's the install. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I will hit the install in a little bit and we'll walk through that. But as I'm poking through, you can see this is just a GNOME experience here, a GNOME desktop environment. You've got your boxes here, which is your virtual machine, disk usage analyzer, those kinds of things. Looks like a game, LibreOffice. And if I use my scroll wheel, it goes to the next page. The layout's a little different than some of the other GNOMEs that I've seen. You've got a passwords, Let's see, what does it say here? Passwords and keys, GNU PG keys, and uh, GNOME Tweaks is already here, if you know about that. Looks like they have their own web piece here. Maps, you get the deal. Some parental controls already set up. So you give a kid a tablet and you've got Pure OS, you might feel more comfortable with that. That's really great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the install. I'm gonna hit this install. I'm guessing we're going to see something we're very familiar with. And it is, 
and we are going to walk through this quickly. I'll just let the install process happen and then I'll meet you on the flip side. So because the disk is encrypted, one of their security features that they want to encourage you to use. You can do this with many other Linux and open source operating systems. This isn't new. It was definitely something that uh, seemed to be suggested. And now it's time for login. And this is a familiar thing for anyone who uses GNOME. And once again, they start with this help menu. No problems there. We've got these pieces here that you are very familiar with in your system tray. You also have your notifications and Calendar sitting here and a do not disturb. I think that's pretty cool that GNOME has that. Now to get to the activity screen, you know you can click that or you can hit the super key. Rhythm box is, is set there, photos, LibreOffice, files, help, and your applications. Here in this search, you can search for what you need. If I search for Libre, there it is. There's LibreOffice, I can click on it and it is ready to rock and roll. Now, I want to access a terminal. Let's see, terminal. All right, let's see if this is installed. No, what about this? No, what about this? This is what you see. I had given this machine 16 gigabytes of RAM and eight cores, and you can see it's using about a gig. That is what normal GNOME, is. It's 1.1 gigs. It's normal for GNOME desktop environments. That is very normal. I didn't know if there if there was something else under the background uh, for their security features or whatever. I don't know. But so I just wanted to see if it was a uh, basic setup here. And it is. Let's see what we have available here for us. I wanna see this web piece. I wanna see which web this is and what web this is about web. This is just the GTK web kit. Okay, um, this is generic GNOME web browser, which should work just fine for most options. Let's see if YouTube will work. And there I am, cool. And do videos a play. Hi, welcome to Jeremy's. And it does. And we'll get that face off there for you. You've seen enough of me. Let's see what else is available. This input method. I don't know what this is. Let's take a look. Current configuration of your input. Oh, so a lot of this was set up in the uh, setup after your install. I get it. Is it the English US keyboard, the desktop environment, all of the, your configuration pieces here for your shortcut keys? Okay, do you wish to update it? Oh, I don't wanna update it. Cool, parental controls. I'm interested in this. I got four boys, I got some kids. So let's see here, parental controls, user settings. So it looks like I can set up some users and then set up some pieces here. I am curious what I can set up for this. I'm gonna add a user. Now I have kid one. And kid one is set with parental controls. Okay, so now that I've set up the user, you had to go back into the parental control application. And now I can set up some things. I can restrict web browsers. I can restrict some applications. Once again, guys, if you have children, this kind of thing is important to you. I am not restricting uh, my kids from learning or growing or having access, but at a seven-year-old, I gotta give I gotta give some sort of boundaries here as a parent. If you disagree, sorry. It's nice that they have these available. Restrict certain applications. No applications found to restrict application installation. I can restrict them from installing certain applications. Great. And then, uh, based on the ratings within whatever software the app store that you have, you can set that up. What is lights off? Oh, it's a game. Okay, moving on. Utilities here. Here's our system monitor that comes with GNOME. Nothing new that we didn't just see, but I did want to show this piece. Here's the software piece, software and updates, backups, which is great. Screenshot tool, passwords and keys you know, things that you're used to. Having GNOME tweaks already set there for you, that's great. Cool, software. 
They've got their software store updates ready to go, OS updates, calendar updates, and utilities to configure the GNOME desktop. Let me see something real quick here as far as what I can install. I'm going to type in Kden Live. It's a video editor, and you can install it. Great. Here are the software repository. You've got your pure OS software, other software updates, authentication, developer options. I don't see if you wanted to. I see you can add some other software. It's saying that Caden Live is being installed and it's been sitting here spending a bit trying to install. I'm going to let it install. But I did want to see how that was laid out. I didn't see if this was a part of the repository package situation or if this was a flat pack or a snap or whatever. I don't know. But there's Caden Live ready to go. I would like to be able to see what is available and how to choose it. So if I wanted to install GIMP, it's just their software center there, and that is fine. We've got this software and updates, which is something we did see already. This really just tells you when the updates happen and your scheduling of those events. No problem there. Video player. Already have some things sitting here. Very cool. I mean, essentially, I've got a basic GNOME situation. Same file browser that you're used to, but things are nice and snappy. Change display background. Things that you might care about or not. And there it is. That's really odd. Sometimes I choose one and then I immediately go, why'd you do that? You will need to definitely check out your extensions, okay? And see what's there and then see what else you can pull in. You can set up some user themes. You can set up some horizontal workspaces, uh, some additions for the applications menu. Going on to the GNOME extensions space, you can make this desktop your own. What I can't test right now is on a phone. Now, maybe if I purchased a phone and they allowed me to find a way to make that happen, then maybe I would be able to do that. But actually, the desktop environment uh, was GNOME. So if you like GNOME, cool, you're set up. If you don't like GNOME, ee, you know, the familiar faces that were there, uh, things felt quite nice and easy to maneuver and to get around. And I don't think that it got in the way. They kind of really suggested some security things like the encryption. For your hard drive, I tried to uncheck it uh, just to get the virtual machine going quickly and uh, it wouldn't let me go to the next place. They're like, you really need to encrypt this. And I'm sure there's a workaround, but at the time I didn't know. But those kinds of pieces in one sense could be frustrating and in another sense it's understandable. I did like the parental controls set up ready to go. Now, could this be condensed and used on a phone? I think this menu here and this menu here could definitely be there. If it started right in this menu, you might be able to easily navigate a touch screen and get to where you need to go. I think that's definitely possible. And I think you would be able to go from one to the other and things would work great. Pure OS, heard about it for the first time yesterday, got curious, read up on it, spent some time on it with you today and I hope you enjoyed checking it out. I hope to see you guys next time.